The fantastic sandstone city of Petra was underlying the 3rd century BC by the Nabataeans, who cut castles, sanctuaries, burial chambers, storerooms and corrals from the delicate stone precipices. Today it is a World Heritage Site that needs little presentation, do the trick to say, no visit to Jordan is finished without somewhere around two days spent investigating the wonderful ancient city. It is drawn nearer through the adjoining town of Wadi Musa, which is the convenience and transport center. It was from Petra that the Nabataeans, a local area of expert developers whose abilities included pressure-driven designing, iron creation and copper refining, told the shipping lanes from Damascus to Arabia, benefiting by the assessments paid on the trains that went through Nabataean region. A seismic tremor in AD 555 is the most probable reason for the city's death. However fortunately a significant number of Petra's most amazing constructions stay flawless, making it a mother load of structural amazements, covered up along climbing trails of different lengths and troubles. The ancient city is drawn closer through the one, two kilometers long, high-walled seek, a break in the stone, destroyed by structural powers. Similarly as you begin to believe there is no limit to the seek, you discover amazing looks in front of the most great of Petra's sites, the treasury, referred to locally as Aukotsne. Cut out of iron-loaded sandstone to fill in as a burial chamber, the treasury gets its name from the misinformed neighborhood conviction that an Egyptian pharaoh concealed his fortune in the top urn. The Greek-style columns, anteroom and plinths are genuinely showstoppers of workmanship work. From the treasury, the way widens into the outer seat, perplexed by an excess of 40 burial chambers referred to altogether as the Street of Facades, not long before you arrive at the chapped 7,000-seat theater, notice a bunch of steps on the left. These rise to the high place of sacrifice, a ridge-raised area, a simple however steep 45-minute trip. Slide on the opposite side of the mountain by means of the garden tomb, Roman soldiers tomb and garden triclinium and follow your nose back to the street of facades, not far after the theater. Practically inverse the theater, you'll notice another arrangement of steps that lead to a fine arrangement of burial place veneers cut into the bluffs above. These have a place with the royal tombs and merit a visit not similarly as they represent probably the best cutting in Petra, yet in addition since they offer admittance to one more of the city's spiritualist high places. To move to the level over the royal tombs, one hour full circle, past the urn tomb, with its angled patio, and search for steps soon after the three-story palace tomb. On the off chance that the tea merchant at the top is accessible, request that he show you a flying perspective on the treasury. Return the manner in which you came or search out a bunch of worn advances driving down a ravine to the urn tomb. Getting back to the theater, the principal way turns west along the colonnaded road, which was once fixed with shops, passing the rubble of the Nymphium in transit to the raised Great Temple and the Temple of the Winged Lions on the contrary side of the watercourse. Toward the finish of the colonnaded road, on the left, is the monumental Nabataean sanctuary referred to locally as Kaiser al Bint, one of only a handful few detached constructions in Petra. From Kaiser al Bint, the way leads towards two cafes, on one or the other side of the channel. The one on the left is the Nabataean tent restaurant, the one on the right is the Mora Market Basin restaurant. Both offer a decent scope of plates of mixed greens and hot dishes. In the event that these don't offer, there are a lot of slows down spotted around the site where you can purchase water, spice tea and negligible tidbits. 
Behind the Nabatian tent restaurant is the little slope of Al Habis, the jail. A bunch of steps ends up to a way that leads anti-clockwise around the slope with fine perspectives ignoring fruitful Wadi Sia. Ultimately you will go to another arrangement of steps to the highest point of a slope, the site of a destroyed crusader fortification, inherent AD 1116. The perspectives across Petra are awesome. Permit an hour to circumnavigate the slope and arrive at the post. Adjacent to the Basin restaurant is the opening to Wadi Sia and the beginning of the winding way that ascensions to one of Petra's most dearest landmarks, the monastery. Referred to locally as Aldir, the monastery is reached by a stone-cut flight of stairs, a 45 minutes droll to the top, and is best seen in late evening when the sun draws out the shade of the sandstone. Worked as a burial chamber around 86 BC, with its huge exterior, it was most presumably utilized as a congregation in Byzantine occasions, thus the name. Coming back down, pay special mind to the lion tomb in a crevasse close to the lower part of the way. Seek the 1, 2 km seek, or gorge, with its limited, vertical dividers, is irrefutably one of the features of Petra. The stroll through this enchanted hallway, as it winds its direction towards the secret city, is one loaded with expectation for the miracles ahead, a point not squandered on the Nabataeans, who made the entry into a consecrated way, accentuated with locales of otherworldly importance. The seek begins at an undeniable extension, adjacent to an advanced dam. The dam was underlying 1963 on top of an Abatian dam dated AD 50, to prevent flood water from Wadi Musa coursing through the Sikh. To one side, Wadi Muthlam heads through an Abatian Bura, the beginning, or finish, of an interesting climb. The passage to the Sikh was once set apart by an Abatian Great Curve. It made do until the finish of the 19th century, and some remaining parts can be seen at twin specialties on one or the other side of the passageway. Numerous individuals charge through the seek fretful to get to Petra. That is a pity in light of the fact that the hallway of stone merits getting a charge out of for the good of its own and the more you take to go through it, the more you can enjoy the last snapshot of appearance. Actually, the seat, with its 200 meters high dividers, isn't a ravine, a crevasse cut out by water, yet a solitary square that has been least separated by structural powers. At different focuses you can see where the grain of the stone on one side matches the other, it's simplest to spot when the Sikh river to 2 meters wide. The first channels slice into the dividers to bring water into Petra are apparent, and in certain spots the 2000 year old earth and where pipes are still set up. A segment of Roman clearing was uncovered after unearthings in 1997 eliminated two meters of soil gathering. A few antiquarians guess that the essential capacity of the seek was similar to the old Greco-Roman sacred way. A considerable lot of the divider specialties that are as yet apparent today along the six dividers were intended to hold figures or portrayals, called Baetils, of the primary Nabataean god, Dushara. These little consecrated locales filled in as standards of the sacrosanct for travelers and clerics, offering them a connection to the more fancy sanctuaries, burial chambers and safe havens in the city's heart, advising them that they were leaving the rest of the world, and on the edge of what was. At a certain point the seek opens out to uncover a square burial place close to a solitary fig tree. Somewhat further on, search for an endured cutting of a camel and convoy man on the left divider. 
the water channel passes behind the putting. From this point forward, the dividers nearly seem to meet overhead, closing out the sound and light and assisting with building the expectation of a first look at the treasury. It's a radiant prologue to the ancient city. High place of sacrifice the most accessible of Petra's high places, this well-preserved site was built atop Jebel Mabba with drains to channel the blood of sacrificial animals. A flight of steps sign posted just before the theater leads to the site, turn right at the obelisks to reach the sacrificial platform. You can ascend by donkey, about JD 10 one way, but you'll sacrifice both the sense of achievement on reaching the summit and the good humor of your poor old transport. The obelisks are more than 6 meters high, they are remarkable structures because they are carved out of the rock face, not built upon it, looking at the negative space surrounding them, you can understand the truly epic scale of excavation involved. Dedicated to the Nabataean gods Tushara and Aluza, their iron-rich stone glows in the sun and they act like totems of this once hallowed ground. The altar area includes a large rectangular triclinium, where celebrants at the sacrifice shared a communal supper. In the middle of the high place, there's a large stone block preceded by three steps. This is a motab, repository, where the god statues involved in the procession would have been kept. Next to it is the circular altar, reached by another three steps, stone water basins nearby were used for cleansing and purifying. The faint bleat of sheep or the clunk of a goat bell evokes the ancient scene, except that no ordinary person would have been permitted to enter this holy of holies at that time. Thanks for watching, bye now. If you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Life is Often if you haven't already click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.